This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruch Mabam. Welcome everyone to the last edition of the Wednesday Shear of Tufshin Ayin Zayin. So uh, we actually gave the Shear last night, but unfortunately the audio was not effective. So uh, here we go again. We repeat. That's what Shuva is all about. And uh, we want to thank Gedalia Schwartz for sponsoring this repeat. Uh, let's begin by thanking the Rebbe Hashem for giving us Siata Deshmaya to gather together every Wednesday evening for Shirei Torah, for Devei Torah. And we're uh, so grateful to have this uh, great Hatava from the Rebbe Hashem. And we're Mespalel, that Rebbe Hashem should continue to be Mashpia on us. Shefa, Baruch HaHatzlacha, Begashmias, and especially Baruchnias, Beharbatzas Torah, Adbi Yaskoel Tzedek. Okay, if we examine the Shemayna Esrei of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we will notice that probably the main theme of the Rosh Hashanah davening is the concept of Malchios, accepting Hashem as our Melech, proclaiming Hashem as our Melech. We say, HaMelech HaKadosh, we acknowledge Hashem's Malchios, His kingdom and His rule and dominion, and we submit to that. However, if we look carefully at the Rosh Hashanah davening, we will notice that not only are we makabal upon ourselves the Malchios of Hashem, but we also offer a tefillah that the Yibbani Shalom's Malchus should be realized and recognized and accepted all over the world. We say, Rule over the whole world in your honor. Elevate over the whole land in your majesty. Reveal yourself in the glory of your might. And we're Mespala Vieda Kopal Kiata Paalta. We want everything that was created to realize that you are the creator. And Biyavin Kalyatsur Kiata Yitzartai and everything that was fashioned should understand you fashioned it. And everything with the soul and its nostril should say, Hashem Alekei Yisrael Melech. Well, Marvar Avoisai, it would seem then that this particular additional request is not really connected to Rosh Hashanah. And that's because, yes, on Rosh Hashanah God is our king and we accept God's sovereignty, but the idea that God should rule over the whole world and everyone recognize Hashem's Malchus is not something that is realized on Rosh Hashanah, it's something that will occur at the end of days. Uh, in fact, this is something that uh, will, will only be recognized. So it would seem perhaps difficult why we are praying for this specifically on Rosh Hashanah. In fact, you know, over the last couple of years, when it comes Yom Naram time, we very often... We very often go to the uh, Maimer HaChachma of the Ramchal. The Ramchal, of course, wrote many Svarim. He wrote Mesil HaSisharim. He wrote Darach da, um, Hashem, Das Tevunais. But the Ramchal wrote a little-known kuntris on the, uh, the Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur davening, where he explains the Tfilois Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur al Pidarkai. And the Ramchal even says, When will it be fulfilled? When will that be? The Ramchal writes in the Maimar HaChachma, number three on your sheets, This will occur primarily when Amalek is removed from the world. Because about Amalek, it says, About Amalek, there was the oath, that Amalek, um, so long as Amalek is in the world, God's throne and God's name will not be complete until Amalek is eradicated. So that means that these tefillahs that, that we pray for, this request that we make, that God should be recognized all over the world, it will not be uh, come to fruition until the Achras Hayamim. In that case, why then are we mispalel for this on Rosh Hashanah? it would not seem to be directly related to the Yom Hadin. And the Ramchal himself explains in the Maimar HaChachma, and he addresses this question, if you take a look on your sheet in number two, says the Ramchal, V'ulam b'yom Rosh Hashanah, ha'adoin baruchu oimed kiviyachol b'bechinas melech. On Rosh Hashanah, God stands, so to speak, as a king. V'yal came therefore, since Hashem is the king on Rosh Hashanah, 
Hine hasha ruyal hisbala lefanav. It is the appropriate time to pray before Hashem. Sheyegale malchusay legamri ba'olam that his sovereignty should be recognized in the world. Meaning, what Ramchal is saying is, once we're at it, once we're davening and acknowledging Hashem as Melech, and in fact, on Rosh Hashanah, God is most manifest as Melech. We're davening, we take the opportunity, well, God, once you're manifest as Melech, we hope and pray that the day will come that this Malchus will be revealed completely to the whole world. And the world will be corrected through this. And based on this principle is the entire additional uh, part of the Shemana Esrei, of the prayer that the whole world recognize God's Malchus. But Marv Rabbeisa, we would like to explore today another dimension of why we pray on Rosh Hashanah for the uh, realization and recognition of Hashem's Malchus to the whole world, that why this is so central to the theme of Rosh Hashanah. The tour in Simon Tavkov Pe'al, if number four on your sheet, brings the idea that typically if a person's life was on the line, if a person was being tried for a capital offense, then the way they would present themselves, the way they would, so to speak, dress and groom themselves would be that they would not have the emotional wherewithal to dress in their finest, to groom themselves, to bathe themselves. After all, they have much more pressing things on their mind. Their life is on the line. And yet, points out the Torah, on Rosh Hashanah we do the exact opposite. We dress in our finest and we groom ourselves and we bathe ourselves. Why? Says the Torah, you know why? Because we are confident that God will perform a miracle for us. Now the question is on the tour, this sounds like false confidence. Are we really confident that the judgment will be a good one? After all, the Gemara tells us and the Ramam codifies that in Rosh Hashanah, all mankind pass before Hashem, Kivnei Maroin, and Hashem judges a person based on one thing and one thing only, and that is a person's merits and demerits. A person is judged only based on their actions, and someone who has more mitzvahs than Averos will be um, written and sealed for a good, happy, successful, healthy year. And chas v'shalom, if somebody has more demerits than merits, they will not be sealed for a good year. Well, if that's the case, can anybody really be confident that their portfolio is one in which they could rely upon to merit a good year? After all, we don't really know our respective standing before Hashem. Yes, superficially, we would like to think that we are all tzaddikim. But the Gemara tells us that one of the things which is hidden from the eyes of man is the oimek hadin, the profundity of judgment. Who could say that they are the tzaddik, that they have more mitzvahs than averos? Yes, we like to think of ourselves as good Jews. We daven, we learn, so on and so forth. But if you look and analyze one's actions so carefully... Are our brachos really with the proper kavana? Do we really daven with the right intention and devotion? Do we learn as much as we can? Do we really treat people properly? And the analysis of heaven is so scrutinizing that nobody could be confident in what the new year will bring. And yet, the Torah tells us that the reason why we dress in our finest on Rosh Hashanah is exactly for this reason that... We are confident in what the new year will bring for us. We are confident that Hashem will give us a happy and healthy year. But are we confident? Can, be com- can we be confident? Is it really correct for us to be confident? What is the meaning of the Torah? Well, Marv what's so interesting is that this time of the year, the Yom Naran, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, it's a progression. So we, what, what, part of what we would like to explain today is what is this progression of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot? Let's talk a little bit about the mitzvah of Lulav. The Gemara and Sukkah, and Daf Lamed Zayin Amid Beis, to Lamed Ches Amid Aleph. The Gemara and Sukkah tells us, Amar Rav Yosi Bar Avin, Vitema Rav Yosi Bar Zvila. Zois Oimera Shiore Mitzvah Ma'akven Es HaParanas. This proves that the remnant of a mitzvah withholds punishment. Why? Because the waving of the carbon 
prevents bad winds and bad dew. Meaning, it's not only the mitzvah itself that offers a person protection, but it's the remnant of the mitzvah, the dust of the mitzvah, the shirayim of the mitzvah. That is what offers the greatest protection, as evident by the fact that it's not just the bringing of the carbon, but the waving of the carbon that wards off the bad rains and the bad dew. The Amar Rava and Rava said, V'chein belulav, likewise with the lulav. The lulav, it's not enough just to take the lulav. Yeah, if you take the lulav, you'll fulfill the mitzvah. It's going to be the extra nanuim that offer a person protection from punishment. Zak the Gemara. Rav Acha bar Yaakov mamti lei umayisi lei. Rav Acha bar Yaakov would shake that lulav back and forth and you know what he would say? Amar, he would say, Dein gira be'ene de sitna. These are arrows in the eyes of the Satan. Very interesting. Rav Acha bar Yaakov would take the lulav and he would use the lulav as a sort of a way to incite the Satan. He would use the lulav to instigate, to sort of poke, to be a thorn in the side of the Satan. Ha <laughs> ha! Satan, take that! And he would jab, so to speak, the Satan with the lulav. Why would he specifically instigate against the satan with the lulav? I mean, I understand the lulav is very pointy. I, you know, and you have to be careful in shul. You know, somebody in front of you who gets carried away with the nanuim, he could inflict uh, some chas v'shalom, some serious injury with the lulav. But all kidding aside, Rav Acher Bar Yaakov was not uh, literally poking at the satan. It was an allegorical exercise. If that's the case, why would he specifically use the Lulav, to say, Dein gira ve'ne de sata, de sitna, this is an arrow in the eye of the satan. I mean, the shoifar is a powerful mitzvah, and the tefillin and the talis. Why would he specifically use the lulav? This is the question of a Talmud of Ramorachai Benet, quoted in the Sefer, Jerushim Velikhe Musar. Jerushim Velikhe Musar is um, a Sefer published by Art Scroll from a Talmud, actually, of Ramorachai Benet. Why, he asks, would Rav Acha Bar Yaakov specifically instigate against the Satan with the Lulav? Marv Rabbi Very interesting Taisus. Taisus tells us, in the opinion of Beis Hillel, Beis Hillel says that when do you do the Nanuim in Halel? Three times. Number one, Hoidu Lashem Kitov Kiliyalam Chastai. Number two, he would shake by Ana Hashem Hoshiana, and again Hoydu Hashem Kitav Kilam Chastai. So Tosis wants to know what's Pshat and Beis Hillel. I understand why, according to Beis Hillel, you shake by Hoydu Hashem Kitav Kilam Chastai. You know why? Because if you look in Halel, Halel are chapters of Tehillim. The final chapter of Halel is Perak Kuf Yud Ches of Tehillim. Kuf Yud Ches begins, Hoidu Lashem Kitav Kili Aylam Chastai. So says Toysus, I, I understand according to Beit Hillel why we shake by Hoidu Lashem Kitav Kili Aylam Chastai, because that's the beginning of a parak. It makes sense to shake then. But Ana Hashem Hoishi Ana, that's Mitten Drinen, that's smack in the middle of the parak. Why would Beit Hillel institute and feel that we should shake? During Ana Hashem Hashina, Ana Hashem Hashina is smack in the middle of Parakuf Yud Ches. You know, Parakuf Yud Zayin is Halu Es Hashem Kol Goyim, Shah Bechuhu Kol Haumim, Ki Gavar Aleinu Chazday V'Enas Hashem Li Oylam Haleluka. And Kuf Yud Ches begins, Hoidu Hashem Ki Toiv Ki Li Oylam Chazday. Fine, so I understand to shake by Hoidu Hashem, but why in the world would you shake by Ana Hashem Hashina? Says Toysis, an amazing thing that the sheet of Beis Hillel is based on Psukim in Divrei Hayomim. In Divrei Hayomim Aleph, Parak Tezayin, Pasuk Lamed Beis, Yeram Hayomim Loyoy, Yaloi Tzasod HaVechol Asherboy. Let the field and everything in it exult. Az Yeraninu Atzei Hayar. Then the trees of the forest will sing. Melefnei Hashem, from before God. The Pasuk, Oz Yeraninu, Atzayayar, that the trees will sing, could also be referring to, they will shake, they will move back and forth, they will be swayed. It's a reference to the Nanuim. And when do we do Nanuim? The next Pasuk says, Hoidu Lashem Kitaiv, Kili Adam Chastai. One Nanuim we do by Hoidu Lashem Kitaiv. And the next Nanuim, 
When do we do the next Nanuim? The next Pasuk is Ve'imru Hoishienu Elokei Yishenu which is reminiscent and similar to Ana Hashem Hoishiana Ve'imru Hoishienu And therefore, since Nanuim is based on this Pasuk in Devei Hayomim Azirananu Atzei Hayoar Therefore we shake by Hoidu and by Ana Hashem. Well, fract the Talmud of Ramordechai Benet, there's one part of this Pasuk that Toysus has not explained. From before God who has come to judge the earth. What do those words mean? What does that have to do with the Nanuim? That almost sounds like that we shake the Lua of an Esrik in direct response to the Yoim Hadin. Because there's a Yoim Hadin, you know why we do Nanuim? What, do, what does the Yoim Hadin have to do with the Nanuim? Why do we shake Nanuim in response to the Yoim Hadin? Well, to perhaps explain all of this, let's take a look at the Nitziv. Rav Natsali and the Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin in Parshas Emar, not in the Hamek Davar, but in a footnote in the Harchev Davar, in Parakhav Gimel, Pasukhav Dalid, the Harchev Davar brings down that there is a dimension of the Yom Hadin that we're not fully aware of. Yes, we are all aware that every individual passes before God on Rosh Hashanah, Kivnei Maroin, and the Yibam Hashem judges a person's respective merits and demerits, Zuchuyos and Avoinos, and everyone is responsible for their Maisim and their Machshavos, and Yitzrei Malalei Lev, even the inclination of the heart. And not only does Hashem judge Kla Yisrael, not only is it Kichoyk Yisrael, but the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah says it's Mishpat Lele Kayakov, even the Umay Sa'olam, Every single individual, every human being passes before God individually. But says in its siv, there's another thing that transpires on Rosh Hashanah. Says in its siv, Dibi Yamim, Elu Yesh Melchemes, Sarei Umay Sa'ilam Imcha Yisra. There's a war going on. There's a battle going on. Between who? Between the angels of the nations of the world and Klal Yisrael. Why? The HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba Lishka in Kavad Bi Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is coming to dwell His Shechina in Klal Yisrael. Umam Lichim Oisai. And we're coming to proclaim Yibam Shem as King. Betfilas Malchi Ois. In the Tfila of Malchi Ois. And therefore there's a war going on. Where we on the one hand are trying to proclaim God as King. And the angels of the nations of the world are trying to instigate and start up with us. And there's a Melchama says in itself. In fact, the Nitziv explains, there are two dimensions of the shofar. Yes, there's a dimension of blowing the shofar where it's a call to do tshuva, uru yushenu mishinaschem, wake up, arise from your slumber, wake up, snap out of the morose of, of the narcissism of uh, daily life, the narcotic of complacency. However, says the Nitziv, there's another dimension of shofar. When there's a war, when there's a battle, when there's a mulchama taking place, the battle cry is there's a trumpet, there's a shoifar. That's a call for action. It's a call to fight because there's a war that's taking place on Rosh Hashanah between Klal Yisrael and the angels of the nations of the world. So interesting. I never knew that. I thought Rosh Hashanah is a very individual day, a day where every human being stands on his own. And yet the Natsiv reveals to us that there's a completely new dimension that is transpiring on Rosh Hashanah, and there's some kind of milchama taking place. So in the Sefer Yerach Lemayadim, Chidushim of the Lakewood Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Rucham Oshin, which was written by Mayadid, Rabbi Moshe Gruen is one of the great Mechabrim today, he points out that we don't understand what the Nitziv is really referring to. What does the Nitziv mean? That there's some kind of war taking place on Rosh Hashanah and there's a, there's a battle and the Shefer is the battle cry. What, what is this dimension of Rosh Hashanah that we're not familiar with? Well, to get an added clue, the Medrash tells us, Vayikra Rabbah, Parsha Lamed, Oisbez, 
on the Pasuk in Tehillim, Neimais bimincha netzach, sweetness in your right hand for eternity. The word netzach could also mean victory. Says the Medrash, two people enter before a dayan, before a judge, and we don't know who's going to win. Imagine two people standing before a judge, and there's some type of court case. Who's going to be the victor? We don't know who emerges victorious. Well, when the guy comes out wa- waving the victory flag, we know that he won. Says the Medrash, so too on Rosh Hashanah. Klau Yisrael and the Umay Sa'ilam enter before the great Dayan, before the Rebbe Hashem, to be judged on Rosh Hashanah. And we don't know who's going to become, who's going to be victorious. And the Umay Sa'ilam are makatreg, and they prosecute, and they instigate. When Klal Yisrael emerges on Sukkot, waving their lulav and their esrog, that's the victory flag. That's a declaration. We won. We beat the Umay Sa'ilam. We are the winners of this war. And the question is, and I'm sure everyone's familiar with this matter, that when you shake that lulav, you're declaring that we beat the Umay Sa'ilam. But what in the world does that mean we beat the Umay Sa'ilam? I thought Rosh Hashanah is in a day of individual judgment, a day where everybody is scrutinized on their own. What kind of competition is taking place between us and the Umay Sa'ilam? There's a war going on, there's a winner and a loser. There's no winner and loser on Rosh Hashanah. Every man stands on their own, and everyone's judgment is dependent on the decision of God. Nobody is beating anybody else, nobody is compared vis-a-vis, there's no competition. What does the Medrash mean? This is a Medrash that we're all familiar with. What does the Medrash mean? Then on Rosh Hashanah, we emerge in the aftermath on Sukkot with the Lulav. There's no competition. But more Rabbi Sai, what this all indicates to us is that aside from the individual judgment that takes place on Rosh Hashanah, there clearly is some type of war and battle and fight and struggle that is taking place between Klal Yisrael and the nations of the world. And what exactly is it that is taking place? And to understand this, we come to a tremendous piece in the Chachma Shleimai of Reb Shleimah Kluger on Shulchan Aruch and Simen Tavkov Pei Aleph, where Reb Shleimah Kluger refers us to some psukim in Hazinu. These are psukim that we're all familiar with, but we may not understand fully the impact of what these psukim are telling us. Says the Pasuk, says the Torah Daisha, Behanchel El Yoin Goyim. When God bequeathed to the nations of the world, Behafri Doibin Adam, when he separated man, Yatsev Gavulais Amim, he set forth the boundaries of the nations, Lemisbar Bnei Yisrael, by the count of the Bnei Yisrael, Kichelek Hashem Amoy, the portion of Hashem is his people. Yaakov, Chevel Nachalasai, Yaakov is the chains of his inheritance. Mayrav Rabbi Sai, what in the world do these psukim mean? If you look in the Targum Yonis Sam Ben Uziyan, these psukim, if you look in the Pirkei de Rebelezer and Perk Chav Dalet, Pirkei de Rebelezer tells us, Reb Shimon Oimer, that at the Dar Haflaga, God said, that's it, we can't just have mankind anymore. Safa, we have to create nations. It's not good when they're united. So at that point in time, the Rebbe Hashem took the 70 angels of the world and He said, we are going to make now 70 nations. Why are we going to make 70 nations? Because corresponding to the 70 Jews who will go down to Mitzrayim, when God separated man, Yatsev Gvulais Amim. He made firm the boundaries of the nations, meaning he created the 70 nations. Why 70? Lemisbar Bnei Yisrael. By the count of the Bnei Yisrael. Corresponding to the 70 Yidin, God made 70 Umay Sa'ilam. And then the Pirkei de Rebbe Lazar and the Targum Yadis of Menazil tells us something incredible. Hashem made a lottery, Hashem made a raffle, and he told each angel. You guys, you're going to get, each one of you are going to get one nation of the world. That will be yours. And I'm also going to get a chilek. So the Yibam Shalom, so to speak, took a big hat, and he put 71 pieces in the hat, 
And he told the Malachim, everyone's going to get a crack at it. And one Malach got, oh, I got North Korea. And one Malach said, I got Russia. And one guy, Malach said, I got America. And the Rebani Shalom, Kiviyachal, stuck his hand in the hat. And out came Bnei Yisrael. Says the Pirkei Dereb Lezer, when the Rebbe Hashem picked the Bnei Yisrael, he said, I like my pick. In other words, the Rebbe Hashem's number one draft pick at the time of the Dara Flaga, we were God's number one draft pick. Says the Hashem, Chavolim Nafluli Baneimim. I have a very sweet pick. Says the Pirkei Dereb Lezer, this is what it means. Ki Chelek Hashem Amai. God's chelak is his nation. What does it mean we're his chelak? Yes, we are his pick. We fell out in his share. We are the chelak of Hashem. And amazingly, Tagim Yonasim ben says that when God picked Klal Yisrael, Michael opened up his mouth and he proclaimed, Chulak Tov, you got a good share. Gavriel opened up his mouth and praised Hashem for choosing Yaakov Avinu. So this is what it means, Ki Chelek Hashem Amoy. We are the share of Hashem. The Umay Sa'olam are not the Chelek of Hashem. We, Klal Yisrael, we are the Chelek of Hashem. What a happiness, what a joy, what a tremendous Simcha. Says of Shlom Klugar, there are two dinim that take place on Rosh Hashanah, hafla v'fela. Of course, every individual passes before God in Rosh Hashanah and Hashem scrutinizes their actions and their thoughts and what they did and what they could have done and what they should have done. And regarding the individual din, we have no confidence and we have no assurance. And if the malachim yecha fezun, we certainly are gripped with terror and fear. But there's another dimension of the din. And that is, says Rav Shlomo Kluger, since Rosh Hashanah is the recreation of the world, and God, so to speak, is recreating the world every Rosh Hashanah, so all the Umay Sa'ilam come to God and they say, God, if you're recreating the world, so this time when you make the lottery, choose us. You're going to pick those guys again. They're going to be your chilek again. Why should they, they be your chilek? This time we want to be your chilek. And they challenge our selection. The Goyim say, we want to be the Chelek Hashem. Do over, rematch. Why are the Jews your number one draft picked every year? You know, the draft is a yearly thing. The team, the same team doesn't always get the number one draft pick. Do over, redo. Says Rav Shlomo Kluger, this is a tremendous battle that takes place every Rosh Hashanah where we're vying and we're striving to remain the Chelek Hashem and to be chosen again, for the Yom Hashem to declare again, Ki Chelek Hashem Amoy. And it's a very great struggle. And we're warding off those nations of the world. And you know what the ammunition in our repertoire is? Malchios. That when we daven and we say, Hashem, you are our king, and we pray and we hope and we yearn that your malchus is recognized all over the world, that, that is the arrow in the eyes of the Umay Sa'ilam. That is how we ward them off. That is how we deserve to be re-awarded the title, Kichilak Hashem Amoy. And therefore, says of Shlomo Kogar, there's a dichotomy of emotion that a Jew feels on Rosh Hashanah. On the one hand, we're so scared. We don't know what the new year brings. We don't know what the new year has in store for us. We hope it brings us peace of mind, security, happiness, success, and everything we hope for. And we have no assurance. But there's another aspect of the din that regarding this aspect, we are confident in the outcome. And that is regarding the battle that we have with the Umm Yisraelim vying to be the Chilak Hashem. We are betuchin and we know Yoidim Shakosh Baruch Yasalon Unes. We know God's going to make a miracle and we're going to remain and continue to be the Chilak Hashem. Says of Shoma Kluger, if you tell a guy you're going to be a multi-billionaire but it's going to come along with a little Agmas Nefesh, the person will say, I'll take it and they'll be ecstatic. Therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, yes, we don't even know about our lives on Rosh Hashanah. But the great happiness and joy and simcha 
of being a word and being confident that we will con- con- continue to be the Chelek Hashem, that is such a powerful emotion that the overwhelming feeling on Rosh Hashanah is Simcha. And we wear our finest and we groom ourselves and we're confident. And that confidence is the overarching feeling of Rosh Hashanah despite the fact that as an individual we really have no guarantees. The Nitziv in the Hamak Davar, in Achrei Mois Perak Tezai in Pasuk Chavtes, the Nitziv tells us, Yom Kippur also is a Melchama for Kal Yisrael. And it's a war with the angels of the nations of the world. And they are not bothered with the individual. We have no, no individual has any business with the angels of the nations of the world. But what they're coming to do is usurp the Uma of Klal Yisrael, the Mazel of Klal Yisrael, the Hashkoch of Klal Yisrael. They are vying to be the Chelek Hashem. Is it any wonder then, says the Talmud of Mordechai ben in number 17, why Rav Achab Yaakov, when he wanted to instigate and, and uh, stick it to the Satan, how would he stick it to the Satan? With the Lulav! Why the Lulav? Because now we understand. When we go to Shul on Sukkot and we wave the Lulav and we say, we won, what did we win? What were we the winners of? Regarding what are we the victors? Not regarding our personal din. We have no idea what the outcome of the personal din is. Regarding that we are awarded Chela Kashem. And when we wave that Lulav, we are declaring... We won! We enjoy the great benefit of Kichela Hashem Amoy. We are God's share. We are God's number one draft pick. Two years ago, last year, this year, next year. We're confident, and when we wave that lulav, we're sticking it to the Satan. And that's where Rav Yaakov would poke the Satan with the lulav. Because perhaps we could explain it further. All the other mitzvahs are an individual accomplishment and the satan to to counteract that the satan has a lot of ammunition oh yeah you did this mitzvah but let, so let's check your personal repertoire but regarding the mitzvah of lulav and regarding this dimension that we are the chilek Hashem the satan is silenced because the Yibbana Shalom does not hem and does not ha and the Yibbana Shalom definitively every Rosh Hashanah proclaims ki chilek Hashem amai and perhaps it occurred to me, on Yom Kippur, one of the uh, tefillahs that people uh, get into and resonates very strongly with people is the tefillah, Ki anu amecha, Ki anu amecha v'yata Elokeinu. We say, Anu avadecha v'yata adoninu. Anu nachlasecha v'yata goyroleinu. Anu mamirecha v'yata mamireinu. Beautiful tefillah, very nice tefillah. Mashmita it's our sin. What the world has got to do with Yom Kippur? Nothing about slicha, mechila, chayim. The answer is this tefillah is centered around the second dimension, the dimension of will we continue to be the chelak Hashem when the Yibam Shem redoes this goyral? Will we again be eligible to be the chelak Hashem? And Rav Yonison of Ibishitz in the Yaras Devash, in the Chelek Beis, Drush Hay, also enunciates this idea that in Rosh Hashanah, the Malachim are Yisyatsev Lufnei Hashem, Vachal Megah Mosam, Lekatreg, Shahashem, Yafer, Brisai, Vivatel, Hakeshar, Ho'amitz, Asher Karasitanu. The Malachim are coming to undo and to challenge the deal and the bris that Hashem made with us. Very interesting, Rav Menachem Rikanti. Rav Menachem ben Benyamin Rikanti was a great Kabbalist in Italy in the late 13th, early 14th century. One was one of the first of the Italian Mekubalim to commit Kabbalah to writing. And it's such a, an important work that Rav Mordechai Yafa the Lavush wrote a commentary on the Rikanti. The Rikanti in two places, in Parshas Noyach and in Parshas Hazinu, discusses this concept that the Dar, in the times of the Dar HaFlaga, God made a raffle, and He called together what He calls, He was going to divide the Eretz to the whole, to all of mankind, and He was going to give each part of the world a share to one of the, one of the angels of the world. He says, The Shivim Anofim Min Ha'ilan Ha'elyon Shivim Sarim Ha'sovivim Kisei 
who in Shir Hashirim are called the Shoimrim, Soivivim Ba'ir. And Rebbein Shem ultimately chose Klal Yisrael, as the Pasuk says, Ki Chela Kasham Amoy, Yaakov Chavon Nachal Asai. Marvara Boisai, let's explain this idea. What does it mean? We are God's draft pick. We are God's lottery ticket. We are God's chilek. What does that mean? God runs the world. He's the boyre. He's the manig. What's the difference between our relationship with Hashem and the relationship of the Umay Sa'ilam? And the Ramban in Achrei Mois, Parak Yerches, Pasuk Chafei, says very clearly, what it means, Ki chilek Hashem Amoy, is that when Hashem created the world, there is a hierarchy where He does run the affairs of mankind through a malach, through a koichav, and they serve as the intermediaries and the go-betweens between Hashem and the nations of the world. But when it comes to Klal Yisrael, the Eretz Yisrael, Hashem says there's no mazel and there's no koichav and there's no malach, ki chilek Hashem amoy, us and God, together, there's no in-betweens. We deal and report directly to Hashem. And Hashem is not mashpia to us. It's direct connection between us and the Rebbein Shem. Where His number one draft pick mean? We don't deal with an agent and a middleman and a sarsur. It's us and Rebbein Shem. There is a greater Hashgach Pratis because there's no go-between. Marva Avaisai if this is the case, then we could explain a very interesting inyan that's brought in the Paiskim and the Mikubalim and give us an added understanding of the Yumei HaSukkas Habal Eino You know, it's interesting, by the Chet Egal, after Klai saw sin by the Chet Egal, so Hashem said, I'm going to send an angel. Why was that the punishment and when Kali so served by the Egal, Hashem said, Hine anoichi sholeach malach. Let me tell you an interesting tshuva. In the Yishalos of Tshuva's River Vais Ephraim, in Chelek Ches, Simen Tafnon Zayin, the River Vais Ephraim brings down a very uh, interesting idea. He brings down the concept that one should not allow an oived koichavim into their sukkah. An idolater should not be allowed into the sukkah. In fact, he brings down uh, that this idea is correct and it's Mavur in the Sefer Medrash Pinchas who is very makbid not to allow an Orel into the Sukkah. Oh, so now the question he addresses is, well, what about if the Shlak is up? So now technically the Sukkah is not even kosher. Could you allow the Akam into the Sukkah? And he says, no, do not allow the Akam into the Sukkah even when the Sukkah is not in a state of Kashras. Under no circumstances should... Under no circumstances should the Akum be allowed into the Sukkah. And in fact, if you look in the Shach al Torah in Parshas Emar, he also writes, the Shach is one of the Gurei Ho'arizal, he says, Do not allow an idolater into the Sukkah. Sukkah is the shade of belief. And an Oived Gilulim does not have Nemonos. And if you allow the Goy into the Sukkah, ha-kedusha. the Kedusha runs away, and the seven Oshpizim curse the person. Not only that, if the person allows such a thing, they think they're sitting B'tzila de Mehemenusa, but it doesn't. They're not. The sukkah is pilot them. Allegorically, the sukkah is expelling them. And the question is, what's wrong with letting the Gentile in the sukkah? A Shabbos meal, you're allowed to have a Gentile. I'm not recommending, but there's no prohibition of having a... a a Shabbos meal with an Oyved Koychavim. And uh, why? There's no, there's no Isser. It happens to be on Yom Tif, one is now to invite an Oyved Koychavim to their table because we're afraid Shema Yarba Bishvila, you might cook extra. But when the meal is over, there's no Isser to have an Oyved Koychavim in the house on Yom Tif. What is it about the Sukkah that specifically an Oyved Koychavim cannot enter the Sukkah? Moreover, Rabbi Yisrael, let me explain something. The Medrash tells us in Shmois Rabba, Perak Lamed Beis, Oizayin, that when Klal Yisrael stood on Har Sinai, Hashem said, You're my chilek, you're my share, you're mine, I deal with you. And if you're connected to me, you're going to live forever, just like I'm eternal, you're going to be eternal. But then when Klal Yisrael sinned with the Egel, Hashem said, You're not my chilek anymore. You're not my chilek, you're going to have to die. And Hashem said, Hine anoichi malach. 
Why was this the punishment? That because we made the Egel, Hashem said, you're not my Chelek, and I'm going to send a Malach? It's very simple, it's very clear. When we say Hashem is our Chelek, that means we have no in-between, we have no mediary, we have no um, Sarsor, we have no go-between, we deal directly with God. But when we made the Ega, what we were saying is, we want an in-between, we want a middleman, we can't relate directly to God. We want to be like the Umay Sa'ilam, so Hashem said, you got to watch out what you ask for. You want an in-between? I'll give you an in-between. You're going to be like the nations of the world. You're not connected to me, so you're going to die. And Moshe davened. Moshe davened. And Hashem said, don't worry about it. I forgive you. And Moshe said, no. It's not enough to be forgiven. We want you to come back to us. We don't want the go-between. We want to deal directly with you. And Hashem said, No! Hine anachi shaleach malach! Says Rabbi Yoyin on the Shari Tshuva, For a tzaddik, kapara is not enough. What a tzaddik wants is he wants the Yibam Shem to love them and want them again as if they never sinned. You know, let's say you have a good friend. And uh, you used to hang out together, you used to go out to eat together, you used to uh, enjoy each other's friendship. And he insults you, let's say. And he asks for forgiveness. He say, no tainas, I have no hakpadas, no problem. Michael, 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 I forgive you. So three days later, he calls you up, so let's go out to pizza. No. Well, you still have tainas on me? You're still angry at me? No. You don't, you're, you're upset? Not upset. You, you, you didn't forgive me? I forgive you 100%. So what is it? What do you mean, what is it? I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> I forgive you. I'm not going to say a bad word about you. But I don't enjoy your company. After you did what you did, I don't love you. I'm not friends with you like I once was. Says Rabbi Yonah, for a tzaddik, atonement is not enough. We want God to love us and want us as if we never sinned. Well, says, says Rabbi Yonah, what we try to access and what we try to gain with tshuva is that we should regain the love of Hashem. So Moshe Rabbeinu goes up to Har Sinai on Rosh Chodesh El. And he davens and davens and davens that Hashem should forgive us. And he comes down on Yom Kippur and he hears the magical word, Salach di Kibarecha. And Moshe Rabbeinu is looking up to the sky and Klal Yisrael is looking up to the sky. But guess what? Guess what? The Vilna Gain reveals to us you know, there's a major question. Why do we sit in the sukkah on the 15th day of Tishrei to commemorate the Ananiya Kavad? If we're trying to commemorate the Ananiya Kavad that we had when we left Mitzrayim, we should be sitting in the sukkah on the 15th day of Nisan when we left Mitzrayim. Why in the world are we sitting in the sukkah on the 15th day of Tishrei? It's the Kash of the Torah. Says the Vilna Gain, we do not celebrate the miracle of Ananiya Kavad. What we're celebrating is incredibly, that when we sinned with the Egel, God said, oh, you want a middleman? I'm out of here. Adios, amigos. You're going to have a malach now. And the Anani HaKovet, which symbolized that Hashem is with us and that we are chilek Hashem and that we have no go-between and that we are mizdavek b'boyreinu, the Dibok Mamish, that ceased and that ended. The Anani HaKovet left us and Hashem said, hine anuch yishalech malach. And when Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Har Sinai on the, fifth, on the tenth day of Tishrei, and I said, Hashem said, I forgive you. And Moshe looks up to the Shamayim, and Klai Yisrael look up to the Shamayim, and the Anane Akavit had not returned. And Moshe said, What is it? You're still angry? Hashem said, I'm not angry. I said, Salachti Kivarech. If I say Salachti, then Salachti. So what is it, says Moshe? Huh, what is it? I don't love you like before. You're going to have to deal with the Malach. And Moshe Rabbeinu davened two tefillahs. The Gemara Bracha says on Dav Zayin, Moshe Rabbeinu davened that Hashem should rest his shechina on Klal Yisrael. Hashem, Moshe said, Haloi belech techa imanu. And then Moshe Rabbeinu davened, Do not rest on the Umay Sa'olam, v'neflinu ani v'yamcha. And says the Goyin, on the next day, Moshe commanded them to build a Mishkan. And on the 12th and the 13th, they brought Nedavah, Baboiker, Baboiker, and on the 14th, Vayikalei Ha'amei Havi, and on the 15th day of Tishrei, as they erected the Mishkan, Vayered Kvayed Hashem Ala Mishkan, the Anani HaKavit came back, indicating that we are again the Chelek Hashem. Because we were nervous. 
When Hashem said, Hine Anochi Shalech Malach, we lost being the Chelek Hashem. That's what the Medrash tells us. We weren't going to live forever. But now we regained to some degree, to a large degree. We are again Hashem's number one draft pick. But there's a chashash. Did Hashem also choose the nations of the world and Moshe was Mispalo? No. We don't want a Malach. We want you and do not rest on the nations of the world. And when Hashem brought down the Anani Yaakov on the 15th day of Tishrei, Hashem was saying, I'm resting on you and only you. The Anani Yaakov represent Ki chela kashem amai. Amai v'loi oivei k'chavim. So you're going to bring an Oyvei Kacham into the Sukkah? It's completely antithetical to the entire concept of what a Sukkah is all about. The Sukkah is a declaration, Ki chelak Hashem, Amoy! V'loy Oyvei Kachavim! When we shake that lulav, when we say we're declaring we are victorious, maybe that's another dimension of shaking the lulav in the Sukkah, Pida Riza. We shake the lulav in the Sukkah because under the canopy of the Shechina that indicates that we are connected to Hashem, we wave the lulav declaring, yes, we won. We beat them. We beat them out. We are again this year, last year, next year, Behanchel Elyon Goyim, Behafridoi Bene Adam, Yatsev Gvulois Amim, Lemispar Bene Yisrael, Kichele Kashem Amai. And therefore, it's no wonder, says the Tanra Murchabinet, when Ravach Rayakov wanted to instigate the Satan, what did he do? He poked him with the Lulav. That's one thing, Satan, you can't start up. You want to challenge our individual observance? Yesh Lafak Pek Bezeh. But one thing you can't budge, ki chela kashamamai. One thing we're confident on, ki chela kashamamai. One thing we could go into Rosh Hashanah, but tuach, the yoidim shakalish bochu yasa wanu nes, ki chela kashamamai. What's the ness? Maybe the ness is we know God will return to us as a nation. And that is why the overwhelming simcha, the overwhelming simcha of of Rosh Hashanah is we're confident in the Yom Toivim Habam Aleinu Lataiva that the Yom Hashanah will declare us as His Chelek. And the weapon that we use to overcome the Umay Sa'ilam is Malchiyos, the declaration Hashem is our King. King means we don't need a go-between, we don't need anything in between us, we don't have to ask anyone to send up our prayer. We go directly to our Melech. He's my Melech. He's your Melech. He's a Melech. Klal Yisro with no Malachi Ashores, no intermediaries. And the Kayach HaMalchios, that we're Mespalel. That this Hashkacha should be recognized by the whole world is our weapon that we use to ward off the Sari Ume Sa'ilam. We should talk about Firstly, in this din, the Yibam Sham should grant us the feeling that we are eligible and we have merited to be Kichelek Hashem Amoy. And on the same token, I wish everybody, individually, they should be Zoycha to a year of Chayim, of health, of Parnasa, of Gezint, of Nachas, Rafur Shalema, Yeshua, Yisvin Achama, Yisvi Malay, Hashem Komashas Libchem, Latoiva, for Aksivach Sima Toiva, a Geben Shtiyar, Kol Tov, Bracha V'Hatzlacha. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.